Before the quarantine, women had the Me Too movement, doing amazing work. Quarantine hits. Silence. It's almost like you enjoyed being in the house cooking and cleaning all day. <laughs> All we need to do is give you a banana bread recipe and all your fucking problems went away. <laughs> you know where you can't get me to in the kitchen, ladies. Low key, Biden is more entertaining than Trump. The guy is fucking unbelievable. But they don't let him out the basement. That's the thing. You think he lives in the White House? How'd he get lost in the lawn? Did you see that? Remember when they let him out the basement, they took the leash off and he walked into a bush in his own house? He walked straight into a bush, disappeared like a Homer Simpson meme. Just, beep, 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 beep. just completely disappeared. You do that in your home? There's no fucking way you do that in your home. Bro, he fell up the stairs. You don't remember that? It's 375 years old, hit some stairs, rolled to the fucking top of him to find physics. That's how bad he wants to go to heaven. He's like, is this the stairway? Any way I can get to heaven, get me the fuck out of here. There was a month where every child within two feet of him, he bear hug and sniff their head. You don't remember that? <laughs> One whole month, every single kid just <sighs> They started giving him Jewish kids so there'd be a little protection. He was yanking off yarmulkes and just sniffing dandruff off their skulls, bro. Even his son Hunter was like, you sure that's dandruff? The whole family, the whole What'd you say? Acknowledge your emotions. Acknowledge your emotions. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, be doing shit all fucking day. You know how many emotions you go through a day? I gotta acknowledge every single one of them motherfuckers. Every emotion, yo? How many emotions? The fact that you even got 10. What's 10? How you have 10 emotions? There's only two emotions. Happy, sad. Where are 10? What are the 10 emotions? Happy, sad. Let me go up to one of my boys and be like, I'm feeling a little bit anxious these days. What'd you say, bro? Sorry, what, what'd you say? I'm feeling anxious these days. I'm sorry, bro. Todd's saying he's gay again. What's going on with this? Is Todd gay again? I felt shy in the social gatherings. Well, figure it out. Do some cocaine, you pussy. What the fuck? What the fuck is all this acknowledging of emotions? Stop all this shit. Ladies, stop naming the emotions. You get happy, you get sad. I don't want to hear about none of the shit in between. Horny? That's sad. You're not sad yet, but I'll disappoint you. <laughs> hey. At least one of us is happy. <laughs> is your birthday today, dude? Yeah. Happy birthday, man. Wish him a happy birthday. 50 years old? 50 years old? You look amazing for 50 years old, bro. Are you full white? Because this is incredible aging if you're white. If you've got some Latin or something in you, it doesn't count. What are you? Half Italian, half Spanish. Like from Spain? They're white. This is some good aging. Black people, white people don't age like this, right? These black people right here are 73 and 74 years old. This is, listen. Those black people behind them, they're grandparents. So you don't even, you don't even know how old black people are ever. But that for a white, that's pretty good aging, is it not? Objective opinion. And this is your wife? How long you guys been married? 28 years, holy shit, man. Kids, how many? Two, you got twins? Wow, boys or girls? Boys, oh, that's what's up. No, that's just, it's so much better to have boys because with girls, there's like, you know, guys have those weird fantasies about like being with them both and shit. And like, like if you're, how old are your, how old are your sons? 21, so if they like shared a girl, you wouldn't be like, oh, it's gross. You'd be like, fucking let's go, like. <laughs> right, like, they're twins. You let them share clothes, baseball mitts, like what's the next best thing, right? Like, they shared everything their whole life. They're not gonna share a little, you know, conejo, like. <laughs> 
they identical twins or not? Identical twins. That's a glitch. That's not supposed to happen. That means one of his sperm splits into two? You beast, bro. You fucking beast. Bro. You know how proud that made him as an Italian, bro? It was too much in one of you. Bro, is his cum thick? Is it like... Does it come out like Gogurt? Just... You gotta like push at the base, like toothpaste. <laughs> you should've known this was gonna happen. He got thick cum. I got thick cum, this guy. A fucking can of sardines falling out of his cock every time he has sex. It is amazing to be here at Paris Men's Fashion Week, or as Alexander Wang calls it, the buffet. I think. <laughs> he likes to grab dicks, guys. You know, Calm is a good friend of mine. Calm's actually uncircumcised. His parents are here. Mom, is this true or no? Okay, you don't have to put the light on her. Okay, she's gonna sneak into Calm's dick to hide. Just... <laughs> Crazy story. I didn't believe Calm. And this week, he's talking about it nonstop. And I go, prove it. Prove to me that you're uncircumcised, right? And he literally takes out his dick and then out of nowhere, Alexander Wang just grabs onto it. It was fucking quick. Drop it. Drop it, Alexander. Drop the dick. I asked, uh, I asked Calm to dress me cool. He's like, what do you want the look to be? And I, jokingly, jokingly, I say, yeah, dress me like a teacher that fucks the students, right? <laughs> Now, that is wrong, okay? In America, that makes you a pedophile, okay? I know in France, that makes you the president's wife, but we're not gonna talk about... <laughs> Bridget McClung! She was grabbing dicks like Alexander, man. She... What type of Middle Eastern, dog? Palestinian, oh shit. Does that exist? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I heard a Jew laugh really loud over there. That's, so, you heard that one laugh? Ah, 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 ah. A few moments later. What type of Asian are you? Pong. What? Pong. Did you just say your last name? <laughs> You're from Pong? Is that near Ping? <laughs> oh, Mong, Mong. Huh. Mong. From what country? If you say Mong, I'm gonna flip out. Bro, he ain't saying shit the whole time. Hey, neither do we, bro. It's okay, you'll get there one day. Bro. We're supposed to abstain. Did you guys abstain from sex? You did? For how long? You still virgins? Let's go. You're a virgin, he's not. Sweetheart, you've been cheated on. <laughs> oh, before. Oh, thank God. I don't mean to snitch on you, bro, but that was crazy. So you had sex already. You haven't. Yo, this guy, commend this guy right here. Round of applause for this guy. Round of applause, because, nah. You don't know how good dick is. He knows how good pussy is. You don't know what you're missing. You're like a Chinese person with freedom. <laughs> is there a dessert you like? What's your favorite dessert? Publix cake. Mar Publix marble cake. Sweetheart, you are one sheltered, beautiful little lady. What a beautiful, sweet girl right here. Publix marble cake is your favorite dessert? Come on, Atlanta. Ain't there something that gives you a heart attack that you could take this girl to go get? She don't want nothing that starts with a D. <laughs> okay, so imagine you had Publix marble cake, which sounds like a punishment. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with you. But then buttercream icing on top at whatever temperature you want it. 
You just had a meal of it. You've been having that for your whole life, right? And then all of a sudden, you can't have it anymore. Bummer, right? Now imagine every night you went to sleep next to it. Not only did you go to sleep next to it, sometimes it would rub up against you. Right? And it, sometimes you're dreaming, you're like, oh my God, I wish I had some buttercream cake. I wish I had that Publix buttercream cake. And all of a sudden, boom, some hard buttercream cake is just getting pushed up against you. Right? And then you just gotta say, no, no, no. And then instead of eating the buttercream cake, someone just mashes the buttercream cake <laughs> by itself until it's only cream left. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is what this man's going through. That's how much he loves you. He loves you that much because he knows what it's like. Vagina's amazing, even though that shit looks weird. <laughs> You think penises look weird, but there's so many penis-like things. Like you have this, like bananas are penis-like, eggplants are penis-like, there's so many penis-looking things. There's not a lot of vagina-looking things, you know? So like you see pussy for the first time and you're just like, whoa, like, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> what, what? Circles, sweetheart? Do you even know what a pussy looks like? This girl just says circles look like vaginas. Circles, bro? Have you ever looked at like the Olympic logo and be like, damn, that's five pussies all stuck together. Like, fucking circles? Take this girl out the house more. <laughs> She's the best. Circle? Pussy ain't even circular. Right? It's more of like an oval kind of. Yeah. He knows. You don't know. You know what the top of the shit look like, but you don't know what it actually is. So you saving yourself from marriage? You're not saving yourself from marriage? You just being an asshole? <laughs> so when do we think it might happen? Honest opinion, I, I am, and I don't want you to feel pressured at all. I mean that 100% sincerely. It could happen any time. Now you must be pretty cool if he's down to just kick it with you for a year without any sex, that's pretty cool. But here's the thing I'm worried about before we get too excited. His dick game could be trash. He has a real Publix dick game, right? <laughs> And then you wasted a whole year. You know he's gonna come fast the first month at least. You gotta let him get over that. No, you saying no, but let's be honest, bro. No, you not? You think you got this? You gonna crank it before? You gotta sit in the batter's box, take some swings first, bro. Right? You don't go in there without clearing the chamber. You waiting a whole year, you're not gonna click, click, boom before you go in there? If I waited a year, I'm gonna disappoint you severely. <laughs> the second I put it in, I'm gonna be like, sorry. <laughs> Yo, you're gonna hear the best apology you ever heard in your life. <laughs> Nobody apologizes better than dudes when we come fast, yo. Because we try to fold it into a compliment, we'll be like, oh my God, I'm sorry, your pussy so far, I couldn't, oh my God. <laughs> it's your fault, it ain't even our fault, it's your fault, right? If you look back to like early civil rights movement, the protests evolved, they got better each time. Like you look at Martin Luther King's first protest, the march from Selma to Montgomery. That was 40 miles walking under the Alabama sun. Three-piece suit. Church shoes. He got to Montgomery, he was like, fuck this. Where was the next protest? In a diner, sitting down, okay? 
air conditioning, pancakes, orange juice. Hey, Rosa, get on the bus, sit down, ride it to equality. We're not doing this walking shit no more. The fuck we walking for? Now, if you know black history, you know that those events are chronologically out of order, but I'll never let that get in the way of a good joke. All I'm trying to say is we're gonna get better. We're the beginning of our protests. So right now, white people were so knee-jerk, right? We don't think about it, we just fucking do. The government's fucking us, storm the Capitol. Black people, y'all get it. The police are fucking us, Louis Vuitton. You understand how to get a two for one, right? Black Lives Matter, but so does Christmas, bro. I need these presents. So we're there, but you know, multiple people have shitty haircuts, man. It is what it is, listen. It is what it is, you know what I mean? You can't come to the show looking like Dragon Ball Z and Game of Thrones together, bro. That shit is crazy. If Goku is a Targaryen, you can't sit in the front row looking like that. That's one of the craziest haircuts I've ever seen. Do you guys even know this guy? And how do you know him? Since you were teenagers. Oh, wow. And has his, has his haircuts gotten... Yeah, worse? Yeah, yeah. It's a roller coaster. Yeah. It looks like it was cut while you were on a roller coaster. <laughs> What is, what is your job, bro? I work in IT. You work in IT. Oh, yes, yeah, so you're at home. You can have that. I mean, and it's fucking insane, right? Like, I thought my shit was unreasonable, but that is... Like, it's so unreasonable, I haven't even talked about that guy's shirt yet. I've never seen a white dude dressed like an African that just arrived. <laughs> bro, you gotta stand up so people can see the... Bro, look at this. Bro, is this a first day with her? No, you're married. Oh wow, okay. And this is a normal thing. Do you put him in this shit? You pick it out. You're like nobody gonna fuck him in this shit. This is just, this is guaranteed faithful. Baby, go put on your faithful shirt. I need, I need to feel comfy tonight. No bitch is trying to get some dick from you. That's your faithful shirt, bro. That shirt looked like it come with like essential oils and shit, bro. What the fuck is this shirt, man? Bro, where did you get? Cause it's, it's supposed to be a Coogee sweater. It's by Coogee, but they didn't knit it. That's not by Coogee, that's by some Chinese children. That's what that shit is by, bro. <laughs> Are you white? You are? Got like a big watch and a pinky ring and shit. What's going on with this guy over here? He either got the littlest or the biggest dick. There's that's this is not in between dick energy right here. A white dude to dress like that, he gotta be packing something huge for a white guy, like four or five inches or something like that. Like, bro, for you that's a tremor, right? That shit is. <laughs> he pulls out five inches. God zero! That's your best friend? Come on, bro. Come on, bro. This forever single ass motherfucker out here, man. Come on. Say what? You had her first? in the front row. Hold on, you behind the music looking motherfucker, what? What the hell is happening over here? So wait a minute, you guys are all friends. You guys hooked up first. He was in survival mode, don't take that personally, like, because I was about to go in. And he was like, I gotta stop this somehow. Fuck this girl first! <laughs> 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 now 
uh, he had that shit cocked, ready to go. The second he found out he was in front row, he was third wheel, he was like, nah, I'm telling everybody, bro, it is what it is. The whole community's gonna know. All right, I'm not getting made fun of in front of all these people. Everybody gonna know we shared the potato. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yo, you're a confident motherfucker, bro. That's confidence, dude. I wouldn't even let him sit next to her. I'd sit in the middle. What the fuck is going on? You know, I was thinking you're some fucking virgin third wheel, motherfucker. You're out here dicking down all your boys' girls. This is crazy. This girl's getting so horny, she's taking off her jacket, man. What's to say right now? Hold on. Did you just find out this information right now, sir? So how long before you guys start dating? Is this is this uncomfortable for you, sweetheart? It's not. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we're aware. That's why we're having this conversation. Not only have you been through it, <laughs> they've been through it. <laughs> Don't flip your head! You okay, buddy? You gonna hold yourself the whole show, dog? You're making me feel uncomfortable. I'm not gonna make fun of you, man. We're here together. What's your name? Francisco, nice to meet you. That's your roommate? That's what you tell your parents, bro. That's it. How long have you guys been roommates? Five years, huh? Y'all can't get gay married out here yet, or what? I don't think you guys are gay, but the more questions I ask, I'm like, nah, they're definitely gay, man. It's... And that's cool, Francisco. I mean, you're named after the gayest place in America when you think about it. Man, what do you do out here, bro? For Lululemon? <laughs> I knew I was onto something, bro. Do you wear Lululemons, miss? Not at all, it's not your thing. What's your thing? Puerto Rico, you wear Puerto Rico. <laughs> just panties, just that, okay. Right. I'm glad you answered that question, because for a moment I thought you were absolutely retarded. Uh... <laughs> it's nice being a hot girl, right? You just say whatever, and guy goes, oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm wearing some Puerto Rico too. I love Puerto Rico. Why are you not wearing Puerto Rico? <laughs> you single, you have a boyfriend, are you married? You're single. Gotcha, okay. How long have you been single for? Just a year? Okay. Are you enjoying your time? Catching bodies? <laughs> How many bodies you caught this year, you think? Like a police department? What's the murder rate going on around there? Two the whole year? Two dicks the whole year? Wow! You ever worry that you'll like lose your skill at sex if you don't do it often? You do, you do, really? Control yourself, bro. <laughs> Control yourself, bro. This is a good, this is a good man right here. Cause he heard that shit and he knew his wife was next to him. He didn't even look over it. He just kept eating his fucking hummus dip. Just dipped another chip and like, I'm gonna look straight. I don't care about all that ratchetness over there. I'm a happily married man. I don't give a fuck if bitches is eating dicks and pussies at the same goddamn time. Where is she? Where is she? Call the boys. <laughs> dicks and pussies at the same time? That seems almost impossible. To eat a dick and a pussy at the same time. You would need two mouths to do that. Or a really small penis. <laughs> Where you could pack it on one side like tobacco and then just lick pussies out the other hand. 
You must have a tongue like a golden retriever. Just... <laughs> God, Francisco, you've probably eaten dicks and pussies. What is it like to? What do you do for a living? An esthetician. So you just be ripping out pussy hairs and shit like that. That's a brave thing right there. You're self-employed. Eyelashes. You do eyelash extensions. Eyebrow extensions. Now, have you combined both businesses? So like you tear out the pussy hairs and then put in a... You never seen some pussy hairs that were super straight? Like you get a nice Filipino girl, she got the straight pussy hair. <laughs> Shit doesn't even curl, just goes down straight. Yup. You never seen that shit? He's gotta part that, it looks like bangs. No, this is serious. So you've never seen that? No. Okay. As a joke, yes, but in real life, all the pussy hair you see is curly. <laughs> Have you ever seen a pussy and then you've been like, I can't work on that thing right there. That is, that is crazy. That's absolutely horrifying. Never once. You've never, you're not picky with your pussies. Because you're in there, right? Like they open up and it's, hey, how you doing, right? You got the whole encyclopedia. You're just leafing through that thing. <laughs> So this is, no, I'm just saying, it's a very intimate thing. I would never feel comfortable going to an esthetician. It's too intimate. I mean, obviously no disrespect to you, sir, but like, you're an attractive woman. I can't let you see my soft pecker. It's too intimate. I don't even let my doctor see my fully soft dick. I got a male doctor. Once he leaves the room, I pop, 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 pop. I just get a little blood down there, hit the head a few times, then he comes back and he's like, oh yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's right, motherfucker. Okay, you see that medium swole? You see that medium swole, doc? Check the testes and let's get out of here. I swear to God, like two weeks ago before I came here, I remember thinking like, what the fuck am I gonna talk about? <laughs> I was so concerned, I actually Googled what the fuck is going on in Canada. And there was a headline, Punjabi. That's what I'm talking about. My juts in the building, baby. Let's go. All the way from the Bramley City Center, all the way. <laughs> I saw the headline, Punjabi, it said, Punjabi separatists assassinated. I said, oh no. They got Trudeau. They got, they got, they got Justin there. How the hell? How the hell did they assassinate Justin Der? Did they force him to kiss his wife on camera? How did they? <laughs> then I look up the details of the story. The dude was assassinated. India sent some motherfuckers here to assassinate. I'm like, why is nobody talking about this fucking story? Then I looked up the guy who's assassinated his name. His first name is Hardeep. Yo, let me tell you about a story so true. We're showing me style and it's all so cool. It's about a garment torn and frayed. Getting this threads, the story conveyed. Walking down the streets, we're holding my teeth. These rip things here are part of me, you see. It ain't about the brand or the label they hold. It's about the journey, the stories it unfolds. In these ragged clothes, I find my voice. A testament to resilience, my choice. From the streets to the stage, I rock my style. In my tattered shirt, I walk that mile. The torn, but still I stand in my ragged attire. I command it's not just fabric, it's a statement. I preach in my threadbare garment, I find my reason. From the barrio to the bar, I make my mark. In my worn out jeans, I leave a spark. They may call it rags, but I call it art. In every stitch and tear, I play my part. It's a struggle in the streets, the hustle's so real. In my tattered jacket, I seal the deal. A symbol of defiance against the status quo. My passion, the pants, I let it show. It's not about the riches or the wealth I lack. In my faded hoodie, I stay on track. It's the heart of the hustle, the grind each day. In my worn out kips, I find my way. Ripped and torn, but still I stand. In my ragged attire. Command. It's not just fabric, it's a statement I preach. In my threadbare garment, 
I find my reach. So here's to the ones with the clothes that tear in our patched up attire. We have, so let the world see our garments worn. For in our rags, our stories are born. In the language of the streets, we speak. In our torn up clothes, we find our peak. His last name is spelled N-I-J-J-E-R. That's too close. That's too fucking close. I'm sorry. White people, we can't share this story. We gotta sit this one out. I saw Punjabis in the streets like, say his name! We're like, we would love to, but we can't. We just... Can you even give us that pass? Can you give us an N-word pass? And they shot him, right? That would happen? Now, to be fair, if you're good at assassinating him, you've got to shoot him. Because you can't poison him. Because y'all eat your food. <laughs> Indian stomachs are indestructible, bro. You could put plutonium in butter chicken and they'd be like... A little spicy, a little bit spicy, maybe. Poisoning is for white people only, bro. You could assassinate me with cilantro, bro. I'm out easy. They got shots with a garnish, bro. They garnished them. <laughs> All I'm saying, bro, is unbelievable. An Indian was killed on Canadian soil. And it wasn't in a residential school, man. Can you believe? By the way, the name of this theater is the most Jewish name I've ever heard. <laughs> Meyer Horowitz Theater? Is this next to the Bagel Dreidel Arena? What? Bro, that turban is big, dog. Oh no, I gotta see. I've never seen it. Hey, put the spot on, bro. You gotta be considerate for the people behind you for the show, dude. You wore your tallest turban. Damn, bro. Do they got different heights? Is today like a really religious day that you got the? Are you like the king, Punjab? Son, that's a high one. Is that not a high one? Because you never cut your hair, huh? So you got to wrap all that shit in there, dog. You know what you could do? You could cut it and no one would fucking know. <laughs> Why do some of them have a knot, but yours doesn't? Like, some of them have a knot. Yeah, the knot is up there, but yours looks like you could put, like, apples and pears and shit on the top of it. Sorry? What? There's layers to it. So wait, are you like a better version of Indian? Wait, you earn that? You earn the bowl? And then how do you earn that one? What do you gotta do? You turn 12? Holy shit, dude. It's like the opposite of Jews. Like you get a little bit more on your head. y'all had a bar mitzvah what's it called when you turn 12 dude thank you sweetheart i'm talking to the brown guy are you the representative for meyer horowitz here is it <laughs> what is it bro what is it called the star of bundy thank you dog I can't imagine how big your shit is, because you know it. This motherfucker walking around like the Pope of India, dog. I don't even know if you're Indian. I assume you're Indian. What type of Indian? I am Punjabi. Punjabi? Are you sick? Yeah, I'm sick. Fuck with six, man. Those are the dudes that wear the turban and shit, and they got that bracelet, that little silver bracelet. That's a badass bracelet. No, for real, because back in the day, that used to be a sheath that would protect them from swords because the Sikhs were the warrior class of people in India. And then over the years, you know, the meaning has changed. Now it's used to rest on the steering wheel of an Uber, but... <laughs> Son, 
If they got that bracelet locked on that steering wheel, though, they ain't never crashing, dude. Never crashing.